Welcome to episode number 64 of the round table. I'm Grant Brisby. I'm here with Andy McCullough and Mark Craig. Uh, Andy, let's start with you. Are you feeling better after you coughed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I made it through irrevocable glue waivers, so okay. I'm back. <laughs> Irrevocable glue waivers. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know it's cliche to say band name, so band album. Like that's like a yeah like, or an album title. Album that's title. a guided by voices record for sure. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I'm not gonna look it up, but I'm positive. I look at Mark's face. <laughs> uh, Mark, how you doing? What do you think about guided by voices? I have no freaking, you know, what? What are we Barely, talking about? Well, here's the thing. Uh, their lead singer uh, threw a perfect game in college. Is that right? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. You don't. You, what? You don't know that Robert Pollard threw a, a perfect game, perfect game or no hitter in college, like for a, his softball team? No. All right. I'm, I'm googling because it's oh, a man. small college. Robert Pollard, a uh, no hitter. Um, he right threw a state, college, no hitter. right state university. Wow. That's like that's crazy. that's not a small school. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, that's no, a that's legit a... school. Wow. All right. Mark, did you know that? Nope. Did not know that. <laughs> did not. But that is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. That's anyway, great. Uh, how's everyone doing? Let's go talk baseball. You know, we do this once a week. So every time we get on and we kind of look at each other and we look like every week takes a month. And so we forget what happened in the middle of last week after a recording. All the waiver shenanigans happened. Yeah. Like all the waiver shenanigans. And we have to talk about I know it's a little bit outdated now, but you haven't heard our thoughts. Our thoughts are what's really important here. So, uh, Andy, take it away. Why? <laughs> why? why for, who? Who? Why? I. So, like, covering baseball, like, we joke about how this job is fake, you know, but it's real. Like, you know, we're, we actually work, you know, sometimes. And uh, there is a, an element of doing your job uh, where you're like, wait, what are the rules? <laughs> because like you know you're trying to remember like okay you know uh so they put these guys on waivers can they pull them back is this release waivers is this irrevocable waivers doesn't everyone go through waivers wasn't there a cycle where like manny ramirez made it through waivers and then you're thinking to yourself that was 2007 the rules are so different than that <laughs> you gotta like pull up the cba to figure this out i was um i found this entire cycle this entire whatever you want to call it, this waiver shenanigans to be very confounding, less the behavior of the angels, uh, but more why all these teams seemed so interested in acquiring these players uh, and paying them. But, but I'm pro labor. So like, I think it's great that, that the guardians decided to spend $7 million very randomly when they were, you know, six games out. Uh, so yeah, like why, what, what, why you, you you used a more colorful adjective to describe these players uh, before the pod before we were recording? Talented. Yeah, it That's starts with one. It starts with dog. Uh, rhymes with. <laughs> I didn't say that. Great. Wow, that sounds like something Mark would say. That's mm. not. Uh, let me remind Andy that we had a bit of a friendly wager. We did do that about the waivers. Andy was like, "Who's going to claim these people?" And I said, what's the number? And he said, two and a half. And I said, give me the over. I said, okay, you're on. So obviously the, the over covered, which is great. <laughs> and, then, and then I took, that, I took those winnings, by the way, and, and Colorado took care of business over the weekend. So that was great. And you're talking um, college football or uh, Duke you... took care of business over the weekend. That okay. was great. I was going to so, say, if anyway, you're betting on the Rockies, like that's intervention. No, 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 no. We, we okay. can't bet no, on we baseball can't bet on here. Baseball. That's a no-no. Oh, I didn't know that. We cover the sport. Okay, no. I mean, yeah, I don't. No baseball betting for me. Okay. But anyway, um, no, I think this waiver period is just um, a combination of just like horrible mismanagement, the fact that you, they would even be in this position, the Angels, but also like clever in that, you know, the rules changed a while ago, so there aren't revocable waivers anymore. But the Angels recognized, you know, a, a natural deadline, which is September 1. That if you get a player on your 40 by September 1, they can be on the playoff roster. And I think timing their waiver dump to coincide with the deadline was pretty doggone clever on their part. So 
Um, I think Ken Rosenthal has mentioned this a few times. You know, there's a possibility that we see this um, again because there is a natural deadline in place, which is playoff eligibility. So, and, and because there aren't trades that can happen after the trade deadline anymore, um, you know, you got that combination of a deadline and scarcity and just enough of like a, um, a, a loophole in the rules to basically move a player. So I, I think, um, yeah, we might have seen something that uh, becomes kind of a second mini deadline of sorts. You know, it's not a trade, obviously, but it's sort of the, the giveaway deadline, if you will. And and yeah, it, it's if you're a team like the Angels, why not shed that salary? You're not going sure. anywhere. You're not going anywhere. So why not? Do do you think it's a like? Do you think they should close that loophole? Good question. Um, that's a, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I actually haven't thought of it from that aspect. I, I liked it. I kind of like the idea of, you know, because it's not like it's free, right? Like, there's not a lot of maneuverability here. You're either going to take the full freight for a player or you're not. Right. Like, that's the whole thing. So because it's kind of, like, simple that way, I like it. Pay the money or don't. That's it. There's no negotiation. There's none of that stuff. Pay the money or don't. Um, so long as it stays that way, I'm cool with this. Um, it's not a trade. It's just a straight up claim. It's just picking up the freight. So just real quick, just to go back to something that we talked about, what if I have inside information as a writer on a baseball team? Can I bet on them? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So what I... Dude, standards are going to be so pissed at us. Stop. What, Stop if I'm, what if I'm voting for an award in MLB? Oh, my God. Can I bet on Guys, that? enough. Dude. Oh Dude. no! But seriously, I uh, you're gonna get me the, dragged into a meeting, okay? <laughs> Stop. You are already going to get dragged into a meeting. Uh, First of all, Mark, nice. you don't have to worry about with, that with me because I don't vote, baby. That's right. That's true. That's true. Uh, and I apologize for derailing. I think the 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 <laughs> the rule just needs some tweaks. I I don't mind the concept because. There used to be the August trade uh, shenanigans yeah. where you would you sneak a guy through waivers and if you got through waivers or someone could claim them and it, it's it been a part of <laughs> baseball. I mean, the Marlins dumped Cody Ross in 2010 uh, specifically because they didn't want to pay that money. They didn't want to pay him in arbitration. The Giants picked him up. He ended up having like a historic postseason for them. And so it's, this is not that dissimilar from what's going on now. It's just a uh, little different flavors. What I don't like is the idea that the pecking order of waiver claims allows one team to like go to the smorgasbord and be like, well, okay, we'll take uh, you and you like it. You take one back of the line. That's what I, I so yeah. one team can't just, I mean, you know, it's kind of funny that the guardians did that and, and they're still very much the guardians right now (laughs) but you know i would like that tweak but i don't mind it as a concept that that i feel like reading through the comments and then the feedback was the one that the readers got more upset about more than anything else was the waiver order that that you could do what cleveland did which is just basically stock up like claim them all and like whatever right now here's the thing though they still have to pay the money so, like, if, if a team is willing to pay the money, like, I, this isn't fantasy baseball, all right? Like, this is, I, I think this is fine. I think actually the way it is is just fine. If, if they, if, because you still have to pay the money and shed the roster spots to do it. This is not like freebies, all right? Yeah. Like, and, and that's what I thought was interesting, you know, about going into that day was like, you're going to find out, like, hey, okay, who's, who's messing around? Who's serious, mm-hmm. right? Because it, it really came down to who's going to pay the money. And, and also, like, you know, clear a spot if you didn't have one already. Like, it, so I, I don't have a problem with it. Like, if, if you're a team like Cleveland that, for whatever reason, I, you know, I'm a little bit shocked that they did that. In fact, I remember, like, not even listing them amongst the contenders when I did, like, a, a, a look ahead for this just because, like, it's like, why? Like, they're not very good anyway. And, and, that, and by the way, like, it, the, the initial returns don't look great, <laughs> right, with the Giolito the other day. But, like, I don't know. It... it if they're willing to pay the freight and clear the roster spot, then I have no problem with a team being able to snag as many of these people as they want. Yeah. I mean, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish though. Like if you're trying to encourage 
teams that are out of it to spend to get into it, then you can maybe allow the, you know, a team like the Guardians to just scoop up four of the guys. But if you're trying to reward teams who have been like competing during the year and maybe like, you know, the Arizona Diamondbacks who like added a closer at the deadline, right? Then you would make it so that it's one pick back of the line. It just it just kind of depends on what, you know, what you want the rule to actually do. Um, I will be curious to know if they close it because there was seemed like a lot of people were just sort of miffed about the entire thing. Uh, you know, the fact that the order was determined by, you know, like the worst teams get the pick. Um, the fact that the Guardians took everyone. <laughs> like, you know, uh, but I, I mean, at the end of the day, like we will not think about this waiver wire once after next week um, because the guardians are six games back and have not been a good baseball team all year. And Lucas Giolito gave up nine runs in his first three innings. And, you know, it's just, it just was a very, it was a very strange cycle that confused me. I really, I think, I think with Giolito, what you're thinking is that uh, the white Sox and angels are dummies. Like that's, you're going in there thinking, those two teams couldn't work with that, you know, that clay. We, the geniuses, the guardians, uh, masters of pitching and developing pitching, we know how to fix this guy. Uh, so we're going to take a shot on him and we'll have him for a month. And if we're in it, we're in it. If not, hey, you know, we've got some uh, exclusive negotiating rights in the meantime. And if he turns his season around, you know, maybe he sees that he likes the organization. Maybe there was some next level thinking like that in, in some of it was pure disrespect for the White Sox and Angels. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, that's why, you know, a bunch of teams put in claims on these guys, you know, and, mm-hmm. and the relievers are fine. Like Ronaldo Lopez and Matt Moore. Like, yeah, yeah. you'll sure. Okay. I was going to say that that's yeah. what carries the day. Like you know, $700,000 know, for a decent reliever. OK, that, fine. Yeah, everyone, totally. everyone can use the arms. It's, it's more like, you know, like like with Mike Clevenger or something like that, you had to pay maybe like $4 million yeah, because or something. The, yeah. It was because five. Buyout, because it was five. Buyout. Yeah. So like, yeah. you, and you're, you're a hundred percent buying the dip and the buyout there. Mm-hmm. Like just, you know, what, what, no. Uh, so I, I just was very, it was, it was just sort of presented as like this waiver claim period could swing the postseason race. And I was just like, I, just think the Braves are going to beat the living shit out of everyone and nothing else matters. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like we just don't want to admit that the Braves are going to destroy everyone and there's no point in watching in October. I I feel like waivers are like maybe the most confusing thing in baseball. Because even people who know baseball well and have been around it forever are befuddled by waiver rules. They always have been. Like I, I remember when I first started um, covering baseball, Barry's Verluga at the Washington Post had a little like document that he passed along. And it was like all the basics of transactions in baseball. Mm-hmm. Then it got to waivers. <laughs> and I was just like, what the what? hell is this? <laughs> like, what the hell yeah. is this? I, I don't understand it at all. It's, then the they bulk, came... it's the bulk of transactions. Oh, my God. It's, yeah, yes, right. it's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's just like, and then they change the rules. Yeah. All right. They and, do and that. that like, and, and it's like, oh, crap. So I think there was a lot of confusion just, and I think that made people very uncomfortable with the whole thing. And then, like, obviously, we just talked about waiver order. Some of it just isn't intuitive at all. Yeah. Right. Like we're all used to the fantasy baseball world. You make a claim, you get to the back of the line. Right. Yeah. Um, that doesn't work this way. Um, it, it, the, the order used to actually be like by league, too, by the way. That yeah. was weird. And that's no longer the case. Yeah. So I, I think just the whole confusion around it made it a very uncomfortable thing. Yeah. Um, and, and like anything that happens for the first time, you don't know whether to be like, wow, that was clever or wow. But this, this was bullshit. the second time. This was the second time. That's what that's what confused me. No, well. it wasn't. Not not. The they first changed time. the rules last year. No, they it changed was- it earlier. But like this is the first time you had a team. Right. But what with, I'm saying. No, is- no. Wait a minute. The, okay. This is the first time you have Shut one up. team yes. put a bunch of players on at this timing specifically for, for getting rid of like a luxury tax. Right. That's why it's new. The people they've been putting players on waivers for ages. You know, everybody. Well, why haven't that. teams been doing this all, all like? Well, I, that's why it's interesting. Yeah. That's why it was just like, oh, wait a minute. Like the team that mismanaged themselves into this position <laughs> yeah. actually also did something smart. 
right? Like two things yeah. can be true at once. There, the fact that they were so horribly mismanaged, you had to do this, is really just a, a, a you know tells you everything you need to know about like what's been going on with that franchise for all these years. Well, you were the one who said they were going to make the postseason. I did not say that. I don't when did that, I say that? I think you said that on the episode with Sam Blum. You said, I, did I think not. they're going to make the postseason. Oh, no. Usually I'm able to reel him in, but Sam just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I said that. Um, but anyway, like, well, they're certainly not now. But yeah, uh, I think that was, I mean, <clears throat> that was my understanding of it, Andy. It was like, yeah, in fact, yeah. there was, I had someone from like, you know, one of the teams that, you know, they weren't going to get one of these guys because they were too far down the order, but they were just like, oh my God, this could be chaos. I guess so, what I, what, what the reason, because yeah, this was the first time as far as we know. Because it's not a public correct. As far, yes, thing. that's important. That's and another that's important what, distinction. Yeah, th- we don't have a public log of like yeah. who's been through waivers or not. Correct. And so yeah. I am under the impression that if something you know seemingly you know whatever uh, efficient happens in terms of roster management, that someone had done it before. It, like there's there's very little innovation in that. Yeah. And so my thought was like, well, didn't the team like you're telling me like the Marlins didn't do this last year or like some other team that was out of it, you know, but maybe not, maybe not. And I guess we've like, we've also like uh, commodified the coverage of the sport to such an extent that there's like an off season preview and a trade deadline preview. And like, who are the 10 players who are going to get moved, you know, by the deadline? Like, it would be great if we just started doing like, who are the 10 players who these, bad teams are going to give up on and try and give away like that would be a really great way to juice up you know uh, reader interest heading into you know august 28th what do you think the heck yeah more transactions more <laughs> transactions they, <laughs> like, they get the clicks they get the going subs. up to your gm being like you're out of it this player kind of stinks are you going to try and get out of five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> only have your mind <laughs> uh, yeah i'm for it i'm for it just uh, yeah. i'm for trades the day before the world series starts <laughs> like you've got <laughs> you got like braves orioles and all of a sudden it's like oh like that's otani yeah. coming through the door oh yeah. my gosh like he's, he's on the orioles now he's DHing and hitting fourth i'm for that Let's the go. orioles just like picked up jorge lopez by the way they just like claimed him through some sort of waivers he's not going to be in the postseason mix but somehow he's on the team like i don't know how that was just yeah like, that's what? but that that one's actually never changed you've always been able to get guys off okay. waivers after september one you can All literally right. do it like you could li- do it like the up until the end of the season actually but what would the point be if you can't make the playoffs anyway. yeah but aren't like, there like the teams looking loop- for fill holes or whatever aren't there a bunch of loopholes i can get Lopez into the playoffs, like uh, this guy gets hurt, but or is he just like flat no, out? No, he's ineligible. Ineligible, just flat yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't not for that team. They have to be under team control. I think the first. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. You know, can, can I just want to make a point about the Lopez thing. What do we? Uh, how do we? Because like when a team like the Orioles last year, right, trades their closer when they're like in postseason contention, right? I think our natural reaction at this point after being so <clears throat> like anti tanking pilled or whatever right to be like that is outrageous like they're giving up on this season you're aware of one of the players they got back in that trade it's Yanir Cano who's like an incredibly high leverage reliever who's been really good for them and what like how do you balance like you don't want to basically just throw up your hands and be like well the executives are always right <laughs> but like you, you know like well you know they looked at their odds and yeah they were right to give up um versus like you know the, you know what i mean like they did the opposite of what uh, in a lot of ways of what the angels did this year and i think all of us on this program you know we're kind of just like ah you just you got otani you got to go for it you know but obviously right they should have traded shohei otani a year and a half ago um so i'm just wondering like do you guys think like you know, how do you manage those sort of obviously conflicting uh, thoughts without like just giving in to sort of uh, 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 like executive think? This is this is going to go back to like the rec sport baseball era where you could just closers were fungible back then, like just incredibly. One closer is less, you know, not that much more likely to save a game than your backup closer and relievers are fungible. And so 
I'm kind of coming back to that because the Mariners traded Paul Seawald. Right. And they're not better for it, but it didn't really hurt them that much. Everyone moved up a little bit, and, and you've got now your uh, seventh inning guys, your eighth inning guy, your sixth inning guys, your seventh inning guy, and it hasn't really affected them that much. I say if you can get a, a heck of a return for a high leverage reliever and you're comfortable that you have other guys who can fill that high leverage role, uh, go for it. I don't think that's tanking. I don't even think right. it's tanking adjacent. I think it's just sort of <coughs> realizing the fungibility of uh, relievers. Well, how do you square that, though, with what happened in Milwaukee last year? Where they traded Hader and everything kind of went kaput. Went kerflui. Yeah, that, I mean, I mean Hader's a bit of a different – guy than some of these other guys but it's the same general concept there were reasons to think that hater was busted last year i mean yeah. like you know he had blown some pretty important say he did not look right and right. i think that was a, a bet against him and it didn't work out but it, he also didn't exactly uh light the world up for the padres when he joined them i think he righted the ship in september but uh, he was pretty bad for the padres at first too i actually think that's also a, a case of bias in a way He's exactly the type of pitcher that as soon as it starts to not be perfect, you're like, oh, oh, oh here it comes. Yeah, yeah, right, here right, it right. comes, right? <laughs> like it, it, he's everything, like it, that violent motion, throws yeah. hard, blah, blah. Like he's a, you know, and I don't know how true any of that stuff is, but certainly that might be a case where that kind of bias crept in a little bit to Grant's point. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the bigger disappointment there was that uh, uh, Taylor Rogers, I don't think, did so hot for the Brewers. That was the bigger surprise, I think, in that trade. But yeah, uh, uh, Hader had a, like an ERA, of, let's see, 7.31 uh, in 16 innings. He was bad. I think right. He, I'm, I'm more I'm more interested, though, in, in what happened in Milwaukee subsequently, when which like the clubhouse was pretty irritated. Oh, uh, yeah. You know no, that's I mean? like the, the team itself was pretty not sorry. When I meant, you know, went kaput, I meant the, the Brewers, not specifically because like that was like they traded their closer. Right. And the team was pissed because he's like kind yeah. of, you know, had been in some seasons their actual best player. Uh, you know, like whereas the Mariners traded Paul Seawald, who's a good pitcher, not. Josh Hader, you know, but a good pitcher. And the team was just like, all right, we're just going to, you know, go into first place now. Like, it's just a – it's just – They uh, kind of did that last year with Kendall Graveman too. Yeah, like, but that, when they traded Kendall Graveman, there was a lot a of problem. people pretty frustrated yeah. though. Exactly. Too. So, like, it's a – you know, And then they went on a run. Like, and then they – that's how sure. they ended up making the wild card. So, like, yeah. the lesson is – Tick your team off. Yeah, uh, upset your team and trade your closer. Trade your closer today. Put trade. him on waivers. Put, the, the clo put him on waivers right now. Right that, now. The, the, clay, the closer example is so funny because, you know, for years and years and years, that's one of those places, you know, closers, like saves, all that, where folks who saw the game a little bit differently saw inefficiency, yeah. right? Like that's the very first place you look. Just because someone's yeah. racking up a bunch of saves doesn't necessarily mean they're that valuable. Um, but then at the same time, these are the people that are, you know, getting traded at the deadline when you're when you're seeking out good players. So this is one of those cases where you're seeing both ends of that pull, right? Like there are people who are acknowledging, you know what, this isn't the end all be all. And also on the other side of the spectrum going, man, that's the last piece. I need that guy. Yeah. Right? And, and, and so it's like, it's kind of funny to me, right? Like you, it's both at once. And, and And, you know, maybe that's the fun part of this is that you know, you don't have to be in one camp all the time exclusively. Right. You, right. you can flip back and forth. You can be the team that traded your closer away and then be there a year later and be the team trading for a closer because you're like, oh, man, we need this to lengthen out our boat. Like, this is a big piece for us. The room needs to see this, yeah. you know. <laughs> so I, and they're all true, by the way. Like, can you can you make an argument that it's like an inefficient way that we use pitch? Yes, absolutely. And we all know the numbers behind it. Absolutely. Um, do you really want to go pissing off your clubhouse every year trading that guy away? No, no, you don't. Right. <laughs> no, and sometimes you want the opposite or you're bringing a guy in. Right. Yeah. Right. So they're all true. And I think it's funny <laughs> to, to watch these teams vacillate between those places. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just it's wild to see the Mariners go on runs two straight years after trading their closer and ticking the clubhouse off. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's you can see it's it, with the Royals signing uh, Roldis Chapman and saying, you know, well, if we can fix this guy, we yeah, can get something for him, and then they're right. And the Rangers are like, well, we need that guy, and so it's almost like uh, they got him early too. By the yeah, way, yeah, yeah, they got, they got way him way early. Yeah, they got him smart. super early. So mm -hmm. I, it's it's always interesting to see. It's almost like these the bad teams are farm systems for high leverage relievers in a weird way, where the 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 good teams, the contending teams are just going to let them all the high leverage, but also super variable relievers like Chapman, let the bad team sign them. And then we'll pay that prospect premium. If you can fix them and get them right. Uh, that's a funny dynamic. Yeah. Chapman has been Chapmaning to an extreme degree lately for the Rangers who are, uh, who are, you know, clawing for purchase in the, um, <laughs> yeah, hasn't the bullpen in general sort of been that way? Yeah. Right? I mean, they're a, they're a good team that, you know, has some flaws um, that they, they can, they can really hit. They have some good starting pitching, but yeah, the bullpen is uh bullpen's taken all water lately. Um, I don't know. I, you know, we were going to talk a little bit about the kind of what we're looking for to in September. I've talked before about the, the AL West. I think mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, in go part, for in part because, you know, the the, the Texas and uh, Houston play in the central time zone, so I can actually watch them. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, I caught most of the game last night. It fell apart uh, midway through and stopped being interesting. But, you know, Scherzer Verlander on Wednesday, like that'll be really fun. Okay. Um, I think those guys played together before, maybe on like a Team USA showcase circuit. I can't really remember. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that with the Mariners as, you know, uh, taking on team of destiny vibes if by team of destiny you mean starting rotation that never walks anyone um, so yeah i mean it's i don't know i watched the braves play the dodgers this weekend and i'm sort fun. of just, and i'm sort of just like yeah just let's just fast forward like they're gonna just Aren't, but aren't those teams freaking good? Yeah, but holy the, crap, they are. Good. And the the Dodgers, uh, obviously, you know, uh, the situation with Julio Urias uh, sucks uh, in a variety of ways, specifically for the people involved. Um, but yeah, that you know, that they, they're going to be scrambling to figure out their rotation. Uh, that was speaking of that. That's the thing I'm looking forward to. Yo, Bobby Miller was very impressive. Bobby Ice, as holy as crap! Massey calls like, him, yeah. I, I mean. Uh, you know, like you know the scouting reports. The guy had good stuff, whatever. Then you watch him against a lineup like that, um, in that spot. I was just like, oh, oh, oh my! Like this is going to be a factor. This guy is going to be a factor in the postseason. Now, you know how long are they going to let him throw in games? God only knows. You know, like it's four innings and out. I don't know. But like, you figure one way or another. I think especially now, you know, the, the part of the Orias being I mean, it's a terrible situation. Obviously, there's also. You know, secondarily roster, um, you know, yeah. ramifications with that too, and like you, someone's got to throw the innings, and so th maybe it's this guy, like it, it, and why not? Like, that kind of stuff, high end stuff against, and it, you know, he's getting tested, he's getting better. Um, I think this is the first time he's thrown seven innings in a start since coming up. I don't know. I thought it was super impressive, and and something I'm looking forward to seeing play out. You know, who just threw two scoreless innings in Oklahoma City. That would be Walker Bueller. Mm. Bueller might be coming back. Yeah, Bueller, you know, Bueller. Yeah, Bueller so obviously, in, uh, a very talented pitcher, one of the best postseason performers in recent memory. Uh, how much he can give them is going to be a challenge. I think they're trying to stretch him out to about five innings. And then, you know, coming off second TJ stretch to five innings, hey, postseason baseball, <laughs> that, is, that is a tough – that's tough. That's tough for anyone. <laughs> Bueller is, you know, as the kids say, built different. He, you know, is a, is an exceedingly talented, confident uh, young man. But that's, you know, that's just that's just hard. That's just that's just really hard. He's come back pretty quickly from TJ. You know, we shall see. He's got tight pants too. He's got tight pants. Bobby Miller has tight pants too. That's what the kids Does are he? doing these days. Yeah, Bobby Miller. I didn't tight notice pants. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a tall drink of water. He's taller he's a, than I thought. He's a. He's impressed some people with his fits. I heard Jordan guy. <laughs> yeah, big Jordan guy apparently. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah. like you could do – you could – you'd have to really dream on it in a variety of ways. But with the Dodgers, you could do a lot worse than Clayton Kershaw, Bobby Miller, Lance Lynn, and Walker Bueller as a rotation. Yeah. But there's just – there's you know – with Kershaw, there's the health stuff. With Miller, there's the inexperience. With Bueller, there's the health stuff. And Lance Lynn, like, 
He's Lance Lynn. You can't ever forget that he is Lance Lynn, but he does give up a lot of a lot of dingers. He does oh give, up some dingers. give up a lot Holy of dingers, cow. and the barbs were <laughs> teeing off on him the other mm-hmm. night uh, in a way that you just you know because Lance Lynn has, has been pretty good since coming over to the Dodgers. He's you know they he, no shock here they fiddled with the knobs on his you know his pitch mix, mm-hmm. and he was better than he was on the White Sox. But the Braves have a way of uh, you know. They're just that lineup does not quit, and uh, they're going to be they're going to be very very difficult to deal with. Well, in- Miller was shoving in his start, and then and then Matt Olson yeah patches like maybe a V word the only mistake he made yeah. all night, and bang I don't think it's landed yet. Like that's the Braves. That's well, the, the Braves. And also you got to remember too the Braves had won three in a row day game getaway day. It's Bob. It's the biggest game of Bobby Miller's life. Right. He was clearly up for it. He, right. it's, I'm not trying to take anything away from. No, you're right. But like day game getaway day is going to be a little different than you know game three at Dodger Stadium. Mm-hmm. If, if if those two teams meet and there's and look like uh, the Philadelphia Phillies are going to have something to say about all this. You know the Milwaukee Brewers might like we can't just pencil in you know Braves Dodgers, but um, okay. yeah, that would be a, that would be a fun NLCS. It would, it, the thing that's with the Braves, so, okay, it's a goofy lineup. We all know that. Every single member of the lineup has an adjusted OPS over 100, <laughs> which is absurd. But to me, what's set, setting them apart now is that you've got Max Fried back, and he looks yeah. like Max <clears throat> You know, there was that question of, well, you know, how's he going to be? He looks outstanding. And now yeah. you, you're talking Spencer Strider, Max Fried, Charlie Moore. I mean, it's – they're absurd. They're one of the – I think that the Dodgers teams from the last 10 years, I'm not sure which one was the best team I've ever seen in my life, but one of them was, you know, if I go back, I'm sure one of them's the best yeah. team I've ever seen in my it's life. Probably either 17 or 20, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, this is, I don't want to get hyperbolic, but it's, it's kind of making me rethink like, is this the best team I've ever seen? And I, I don't know. It's just a really, really good team. And, you know, I've, I've seen the 98 Yankees <laughs> or whatever, but I, I don't want to get too hyperbolic, but man, the Braves are good. Just well, the, the tw- good. they remind me of the 2018 Red Sox in that that whole year, right? They were just you know they won like 108 games, mm-hmm. but they were the sort of team if you watch from afar, you're like, I don't know about that bullpen. Like the bullpen, mm-hmm. like they're gonna play close games in October. Like you really trust Craig Kimbrell? Like what you know? How are they gonna get through that? And then they won every game seven to three in the postseason. <laughs> Because they just and then you know Kimbrel actually like got through stuff and they use their starters and you know like there's just the when you have a lineup that ferocious like you can deal with hey we're not totally sure who's going to handle the sixth in the you know the second game like you can also come back if your bullpen blows it like they're mm-hmm. they're just they're going to be a very tough out I would say. Mm-hmm. When I when I covered uh, the 2016 Giants, uh, they had a terrible, <laughs> terrible bullpen, uh, especially in the second half of the season. But what really struck me was that the offense just wasn't getting a, a giving them a lot of help. And so yeah. you'd have every game was three to two, and then oh, it's four to three, and the bullpen's to blame. Uh, what about those the three runs? What what would have happened if you had five or six like a normal team? Uh, so yeah, if you can just outscore teams, it, it papers over a ton of bullpen issues. Dude, they they get scarier as we get closer. Yeah, the Braves do. Uh, I mean, they're we knew they were good. Um, I mean, gosh darn it, they're, they you're right, dude. Like they they do some things that help paper over whatever they're like wherever they might be sure like they they've got an answer for it so that yeah those are the toughest outs that's a scary scary team seven guys with 20 home runs or more <laughs> ronald acuna jr who's like gonna go for you know like 40 80 or something <laughs> this year you know uh and yeah like who wants to face Spencer Strider in game one or who wants to face Max Freed in game one? Or if yeah. Kyle Wright is able to make it back, you know, that's a perfectly fun, you know, like, like and just sort a, of they're, like, they're good, like, man. This is a good club. Like, look what you just named right there. Like, so I looks in the postseason, I think are yeah. important. How different does it get? Right. Strider Freed. Come on. Yeah. Right. Like right. that. Right. So it, you know, and then you look at like their guys in their lineup too. By the way, like you know, this power is there, but like the strikeouts aren't right. Like so, this is, uh, dude, they're a machine, man. They really are. And and I think what we're looking at with the Atlanta Braves is, you know, are they going to 
cement their legacy, win the thing. Because if they do that, then the conversations about this club are like, wow, this is one of the best teams I've ever seen. You know, like it, 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 I think it starts to go to that level of like, wow, they were special, like incredible. So, you know, they got to win it all, obviously, but um, pretty decent bet, man. All things equal. I mean, that's, I don't know. Like I said, I think they get scarier as we get closer. Uh, I just checked because when he said seven guys uh, who hit 20 home runs, that's absurd. Uh, I went to see if the Guardians had one. They do. <laughs> Jose Ramirez has 21 home runs. The Giants have one. They have Wilmer Flores with 20 on the nose. Bill Flowers. Oh, and, boy. And the Braves have seven. Seven guys with 20 home runs. That is ridiculous. Grant, do you think the Giants will make the wild card? I think they might be relegated. <laughs> I think they might be oh, in the no. PCL next. Oh, no. They are uh, playing some of the dullest baseball. Like I had, uh, Bags has COVID, and uh, he he wasn't able uh, to make the the trip to Chicago because of the the darn COVID. So I was doing my thing. I'm not a beat writer, but I'm doing my thing where it's like opiniony recappy, yeah, yeah. Um, where I'm trying to thread that needle. And uh, yesterday, I just kind of put the Giants on blast because they're terrible. Like they just they look bad. They 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 can't hit. They can't hit. And you've got Logan Webb. He goes out there and he's giving giving you good innings. And they've got arms up and down that are, are solid arms preventing runs. Uh, they cannot hit. They Your hit guy. the ball. They hit Sorry. the ball weak. They hit right. the ball soft. And they also strike out a ton. Like you, if you're gonna strike out a ton, hit the hit the snot out of the ball. Like that's what the Mariners do. They strike out a ton, but they hit the snot out of the ball. If you're gonna strike out and you're hitting these little piddly duck snorts. I don't know. Where are you saying, Andy? No, it's just your guy Logan Webb cannot collect a victory. That is crazy. He is. Uh, he's got the not just the lowest run support in the league, but like by a half run Jeez. over second place. Man, he should it's, try pitching better. They would oh, win. oh yeah, exactly. my god! Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Holy crap! Hey, I looked. I thought of you because I was like, "Hey, we're gonna That's crazy." The league leaders, uh, sixteen wins, right? Yeah. So I, I I was like, hey, how many times have we had a season without a twenty game winner? Uh, it's happened a couple of times in the last yeah. decade. It's a, more than I would have thought. But anyway, I thought of you. Like they, they could just pitch better. You know what I'm saying? Just pitch better, Webby. Come on. <laughs> wow. Spencer Strider, sixteen wins. We were just talking about how good he is. Wow. Oh my. Yeah. Oh, let's let's talk about run support. Spencer Strider. Oh, Justin what Steele, played for? this guy who might win the Cy Young, mm. who I definitely heard of before last week. He might. <laughs> Did he not shove last night? I guess he was good. Yeah, I don't know. I, it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't count. Giants. This is going to be a weird year for trying to decide uh, the NL Cy Young. I, I wish, I wish the voters the best of luck. Uh, can I, can I talk to you about wins real quick? Uh, okay, so Kyle Harrison, right in Sacramento, made twenty starts for the Sacramento River Cats. Uh, how many wins do you think he got in those twenty starts? Dude, the minor leagues are about development. I do not care at all. All right, one. <laughs> I mean, I All just right. don't know. Like, you're not going to win this argument because I'm not going to take part because the minor leagues are about development. Okay, here we go. Nick Avila, he is a uh, reliever on the River Cats. He pitches for that team. Uh, he has thrown 62 innings, appeared in 49 games. What is his record? I, I have no idea. 14 and 0. What does that tell you about Nick Avila? Uh, the Giants should call his ass off. Maybe it would help their team. You, you got a guy with a fourteen and zero record. <laughs> like, oh, 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 I can't watch this team. You've got Tom Seaver down on the farm, and you're like, nah. <laughs> We're he's, good. He's we like walking five guys per nine because it's the PCL, and he's got. A Wait, does he really? He's fourteen and zero as a reliever. It's, that's it's hilarious. That's awesome. Good that's yes. so, amazing. That's awesome. Good it's so man. funny. It's so funny. <laughs> what, like, yeah, that's got to be like some sort of record. I mean, that's incredible. Good yeah, for I'm, that kid. I'm trying to think of of all like all the starters. <laughs> like 14, you've got, you know, he all, has a chance of twenty wins. Dude, someone should make a note of that. That. <laughs> Well, no, their season's about to end, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's he uh, twelve. They 13, gotta find 14. a way. The Giants. <laughs> the just Giants pitch a little have, bit better. The Giants have seven guys with ten starts or more, and they combine for fourteen wins. Uh, my <sighs> man Nick Avila. Nick Avila. Always a hot topic here on the podcast. Friend of the pod. He needs <laughs> yeah. to show up and show these boys how to win. Uh, you guys got anything he else was- you're excited about in September? Well, Nick Avila's chasing Nick Avila, 20, yeah, obviously. Yeah, that's <laughs> chase, baby. 
the chase. <laughs> Nick Avila, let's go. Friend Put his ass pod. on waivers. Yeah. yeah. Get him yeah. in a pennant race. Let's go. You, oh I will goodness. say, uh, as long as I'm ranting, uh, I'm not excited about these third wild card races. Like you're talking <laughs> about the, the Giants are still in yeah. postseason position and they they're terrible. They're impossible yeah. to watch. Why am I? Why would I be invested in? Well, if this team can make it, anything can happen. And the Phillies last year, no, this team sucks. <laughs> I mean, this I team think, suck. I mean, wow. I think there were there were as as we all know, there were lots of Phillies fans who said that about their team last year too. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You know, like yeah, it is a weird. It is a the the, the third wild card. I've you know, been against it the whole time, but who? no one cares what my opinion is. But, like, the problem is that, right, like, it, you were incentivized to keep caring about a team that is just not particularly aesthetically pleasing in a yeah. lot of ways, um, which, you know, again, tricks you into continuing to watch, and we all stay employed, and so I guess it's good. You know, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Manfred. We apologize for all our pro-labor takes. But, um, I, yeah, like, I, I don't know. Like, these, these teams are just so flawed. The, the West is different. The West, those teams are good. The, the East, not the East, sorry. The, the American League, those teams yeah, are yeah. good. The National League, they're two games over 500. I mean, it's just a kind of big difference. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing these teams leapfrog over each other, like the Reds and the Marlins and the yeah. Giants. And none of these teams are especially compelling. I mean, I... I the Reds are fine in their own way. The Marlins are fine in their own way. The Giants, it wasn't that long ago. They had like the third best record in the National League. So that they at least can fake it for a little <coughs> bit. But I don't want, I, I just scoreboard watching and trying to figure out what the Reds and Diamondbacks are doing sucks. It's boring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that the if the Reds would be a nice story if uh, because, you know, they haven't had a postseason team. Well, besides 2020, but they haven't had a postseason team with fans in the building quite some time. So if they're able to make it to the DS, it would probably be a pretty good environment. You know, in yeah. Cincinnati, uh, the D-backs, you know, have Corbin Carroll or whatever. You can get kind of excited about some of their players. Zach Gallen is fun to watch. You know, the Giants. They're a tough hang. They are. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, just, there's, no, there's no way around it. Like, they are a competent, tough hang. And then the Marlins, like, if they make the playoffs, they're going to roll out four guys you probably haven't heard of with a sub-3 RA. You know, there's a guy named Braxton who's pitching well. Uh, Braxton Garrett. That's his, that's his first name. Uh, you know, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. In the not, West. Not, like, not Tony Braxton, the West, right? No, not Tony Rex. In the okay. American League, like you can look at the at the Rangers and be like, this team, I could see how this team could win the World Series. I can't really say that about like the Marlins or the Reds or the Giants. Or the but, but we couldn't say that about the Phillies, and that's the argument. But, but at the same time, uh, they're uh, you could they're say magic that about the Phillies. Yeah, the you Phillies could. Have Bryce Harper. Yeah, that was always the scary thing about it. So the obvious flaws were there, but also they hit the ball out of the park a lot. Yeah, right. Like, is that what we said that about them all year long last year? Is that yeah. like so long as they have a puncher's chance, and and it worked out for them? Now, is that sustainable? I don't know. Yet here they are again, by the way. So anyway, like. I, I, no, I we did say that about him. I think, yeah, I mean, to Andy's point, like I, I think that's a great synopsis of the difference in the leagues. You can squint with the National League or the um, uh, American League side. The West. Right? Yeah, you can see West. those Western, any one of them, you can make an argument for, oh, okay, you can see that. Yeah. National League side, it's a lot harder to do. A lot yeah, harder man, to it's do. It's tough. Tough to, tough, to, tough to really envision whoever plays for the Reds besides Ellie De La Cruz. Well, I, you know, like in I, there. I should rephrase it. Like, I'm sure you could squint hard enough to see it, but like you wouldn't want to. Like there's right, like there's almost like God dang it, they're really not that good. Like this isn't yeah. fun. You know what I mean? Like I is that it's a drag. Yeah. Like even if it's an underdog story, like if a team legitimately sucks, but it's a weird baseball and they got hot at the right time, I don't know if I like that. Okay, I don't know if I'm getting behind that necessarily. If I'm like truly convinced, like that, like we like if Cleveland somehow snuck yeah. in through the side door, I'd be pissed about it. I'd just be like, I hope they get swept. All right, they suck. Yeah, like I don't think yeah. they're very good. Like they shouldn't be here. I think you know? from a viewing perspective, you know, from a neutral viewing perspective, right? You should root for your team. But if you're not rooting for your team, if you're like us and you're just rooting for what's the most compelling, like you just always want to see the super teams play. Yeah, I, that's kind of like. Give me the 2019 ALCS, you know, Astros, Yankees. Give me the 2017 World Series. Get, you know, get, like, 
give me the the 2021 NLDS with the Giants and the Dodgers. I want to see the best teams bang heads. Like that's, you know, Braves Dodgers this year. And whether, you know, I would love to see the Orioles and the Rays in a seven game series. Like the one, the one notable historical uh, anomaly that I think goes counter to that was uh, uh, Indians, now the Guardians, Cubs in in 2016. Like that, those weren't the super teams, but that had a hook and that was cool as heck. Yeah. Well, the Cubs were a super team and they were a budding super team. It didn't Mm -hmm. work out, but like, and they had the droughts. So if you know, if you could get like Mariners, I don't know who's the even equivalent of the Brewers. (laughs) (laughs) What if the Brewers? Played in Chicago and were called the Cubs. Maybe that would work. <laughs> like the oh, Cubs, man. the Cubs in the World Series. I mean, the, you know, the Cubs have sort of gone post hype to such an extent I, that like they're back to being the enjoyable Cubs again. You know, rather than like <laughs> the team that invented baseball. Um, you know, I said, so, yeah, I said Mariners Brewers and like. 2,000 miles away, a Fox executive just went, ooh, and shuddered oh, and like yeah. sweating and not sure why. Yeah, people who care about page views at The Athletic had the same thought. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, people, I wasn't feeling call, so hot there, Grant. Yeah. Just, <laughs> the bosses were going to call Corrigan to the carpet for his uh, for your gambling on the NL West race. They're going to yeah. be talking about the same thing. Yeah, thanks well, for I, nothing, Grant. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, so like seriously though, what if a reliever – confides to you that he's feeling oh worse God. and he's letting on oh, for the love of God. Let's not <laughs> please stop it. Please stop it. Mark Kerrig does not approve of this message. Man. Just so everybody knows. I don't even bet. I buy one lotto ticket a week and I think about the things I'm going to buy. That's, that's my game. Do you really? Yeah. It's worth that's a dollar. Cute. Yeah, it's my worth wife the... and I do that sometimes. We, we'll buy a Powerball ticket and just start budgeting what we're going to spend things on. It's oh, great. That's great. It's, like, it's like a two dollar. It's like you know the price of a candy bar, and I just sit yeah. there and go, ah, oh, I'm going to uh, buy this. <laughs> <laughs> Producer Brian chimes in to say that Grant has been betting on the River Cats when Nick and Oh, that's good. That's a good place to end. Hey, that's if a... you. If you happen to know Nick Avila or are Nick Avila and are listening, come on the pod. We want to talk to you about what this <laughs> hey, year's Hey, Grant, like. get him on the pod. It, it's all, all, all Do some damn it. reporting, for Christ's sake. Get him on the pod. <laughs> wow. Man, you can't make me report. I'm a columnist. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. I'm a columnist. <laughs> Is this a challenge? Now right. get him on the pod, Grant. <laughs> God, I'll work this on. This guy's I'll gonna be on. seventeen and zero by the time next time we record. Like it's uh, we should we should be talking about this. It, he was on the uh, White Sox uh, earlier this year as a Rule Five pick. Uh, so the White Sox gave up this guy who's yeah. like a magic. Well, now you see manager. why Rick Hahn and Ken Williams lost their jobs. <laughs> yeah, and they're looking at Nick Avila. All right, this has been episode hmm. sixty-four of the Roundtable. We uh, would like to thank you for listening to us. We'll be back next week talking about baseball because that's what we do. See you then.